This is Cecil B. DeMille in Hollywood. Wherever three or four of America's fighting men are gathered together, that's the front row of the Lux Radio Theater tonight. Some weeks ago, we asked you to tell us what plays you'd like to hear. You said, give us bright lights and glamour and laughter and romance. To that request, our answer is bedtime story. With two of our town's most popular players, and they're right here with me now, Loretta Young and Donna Michi. Good evening, boys. We know that our play can't compare in importance with the tremendous drama you're putting on out there. But if it amuses and entertains you for an hour between the acts of the big show, well, that's all we ask. You soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen are the stars of that big show. We can't tell you how long it will last, but knowing you, we do know who will win. We salute you all. And from Iceland to Shangri-La, Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Loretta Young and Don Amici in Bedtime Story. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The stage door of a great Broadway playhouse stands open, and tonight's play takes you inside for a close-up of the theater. A theater where the star is very beautiful and the playwright is very brilliant. But just below the surface of all this glamour is a powder keg. And the spark is provided by the fact that the beautiful star and the brilliant playwright are married to each other. Listen for the explosion. The play is bedtime story and the stars are Donna Michi and Loretta Young, who gave one of her finest performances in the Columbia picture. In our play, the famous playwright and actress are about to retire with a career full of honors and a bank account full of money. That's the end of most stories. But in Bedtime Story, it's only the beginning. But I, I have another little bedtime story for you, too. In recent weeks, I've been something of a technical expert on the subject of Lux Flakes. <laughs> the plain truth is, I've been washing my own socks. It, it all began when the demands of war took my regular laundryman to parts unknown, and I was afraid that some highly prized woolen socks might be sabotaged in strange hands. The sight of wool disintegrating these days is enough to bring on a crisis anywhere, so I determined to prevent that disaster overtaking me. I approached the problem from a purely scientific angle, and of course that meant Lux Flakes right away. And if any mere males in the audience are faced with the same problem, I can pass along another brotherly tip. Only lukewarm water should be used, never hot. Oh, and, and there's one other thing. Be sure to tell the lady of the house that you are not setting a precedent for doing all the family laundry. Now our curtain rises for you and for American boys in our armed forces all over the world. Here's the first act of Bedtime Story, starring Donna Michi as Luke Drake and Loretta Young as Jane Drake, with Truman Bradley as William. Mr. and Mrs. Drake, that's Luke and Jane, are the first lady and gentlemen of the American theater. Every season, they've given Broadway a smash hit, brilliantly written by Luke and magnificently acted by Jane. Tonight, after a solid year's run, their latest and greatest offering, Catherine the Great, is closing. The curtain falls, and from the wings comes Jane to make her farewell speech. gentlemen. No. No, not ladies and gentlemen, but friends. You've been kind to us. So wonderfully kind that what I have to say to you now is, well, it's not going to be easy. This was not only the last performance of Catherine, but also the last performance of Jane Drake. Yes, my husband and I are retiring from the theater. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, that was supposed to be Mr. Drake's cue to come out here on stage so we could say goodbye together. But uh, <laughs> Mr. Drake seems to have misplaced himself. <laughs> uh, evidently, he couldn't bear to say goodbye, so I shall have to say it for both of us. 
Good night. Goodbye. And thank you. Well, Eddie, where is he? Where's Lou? I don't know. He certainly put me in a nice spot. Oh, now, don't get upset, Jane. The speech was swell. Well, I still want to know where he is. Look, Jane, I'm just a manager, not a medium. The last I saw him, he was at the apartment. Well, he promised he'd meet me here at the theater. Oh, it's my own fault. I should never have let him out of my sight. Good evening, Jane. Oh, oh, come in, William. Did you see me making a darn fool of myself out there? Well, the first darn fool thing you ever did was to marry Luke Drake instead of me. Uh, good evening, Edward. Hi, Mr. Dudley. Uh, Jane, I've been waiting for this opportunity for years. Um, how about doing the town with me tonight, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, William. I can't. But we're giving a farewell party tonight at our apartment. Why don't you join us? Oh, but that's for your theater friends, isn't it? Ah, oh, they're broad-minded. They don't mind bankers. <laughs> thanks, but I couldn't risk it. Some other time, Jane. You sure you won't change your mind? No, thanks. All right, good night. Eddie, start looking for Luke. Put some bloodhounds on his trail, anything but find him. Here's the cake, Jane. Where's Luke? Well, that's what I've been trying to find out all night. All right, all right, I'll talk. Jane, we've uh, all had a lot of fun together. Mm. Why this farewell to the theater? Well, Em, I'll tell you. Seven years ago, to be exact, Luke and I were making an overnight jump from Duluth to Minneapolis, you know? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh -huh. And we had no berths. We had to sit up all night. Well, we got to thinking about all the things we were missing. And right there and then, we decided that someday, before we were too old, we'd take time out to live. Then six weeks later, when we got back to New York, we bought all this furniture. You see that little cabinet over there? Yes. Yeah. Well, we ate hamburgers for six months to pay for it, but we got it. <laughs> Oh, yes, we knew where we were going. In fact, as we bought each piece, we knew exactly where it would stand in the house. House? Uh -huh. What house? The new house was finished last month, right in the middle of the loveliest farm in Connecticut. <laughs> Wait a minute. Has this house got a nursery? No, Emma. Oh. But we have three extra bedrooms, and they can all be turned into nurseries very quickly. The idea of thinking you have to leave the theater to have children. Why, I've raised four children and never missed a cue. <laughs> My dear Emma, you were not married to Luke Drake. You wouldn't have had time to raise a canary. No. <laughs> oh, no. Eight performances a week, week after week, month after month, until you're absolutely worn out. And where is Mr. Drake all this time? Well, I usually find that out the night the show closes. He's been writing another play. Yeah, he comes bursting in, throws it into my lap and says, Sweetheart, it's the best thing I've ever done. Run down to Atlantic City, grab yourself a day's rest, read it. We start rehearsals on Monday. Oh, no, Emma. No, for Luke and me, a clean break is the only way. And we're never going to look at a theater again. Oh, no, my God. Hey, hey, what's going on? Oh, hello. Luke! Hello, gang. How are, you? How are you? Hello, Jane. Luke, have you been in your room all this time? Yeah, I'm sorry. I got detained. Hi, Luke. Oh. Hello. Excuse me. I got to call Eddie. Only be a minute. Eddie, here I am. You remember me? I'm Eddie. Oh, oh, oh there you are. Say, Eddie, look, I just called Mabel Chadwick. She's on her way over. I don't want you to haggle with her about money. Jane, you know Mabel Chadwick. She'd be good as Elsie, wouldn't she? Who? Elsie, Elsie. Don't you remember the idea I had? The two women, the struggle between them? I called the brunette Ruth and the blonde Elsie. Oh, yes. Well, the blonde who plays Elsie opposite you is, is Elsie. Who plays opposite me? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I've been working on the play. Look, you run down to Atlantic City for the weekend. Get yourself a nice rest. You can read it while you're resting. We start rehearsals on Monday. Oh, lovely. The whole weekend off. Now, here's the script, but be careful of it, Princess. Kids, this is the greatest thing I've ever written. And what's more, dear, it'll be our first play in your own theater. My own? The Jane Drake Theater. Where did you get money to buy a theater? All your ready cash was tied up in the farm. Oh, I sold the farm. You sold the farm? Yes. You sold our farm? Yes. Hey, hey, listen, you're tearing my script six months of my life. Yes, and seven years of my life. You can write yourself another play, and you can also get yourself another star. Princess, I wrote it for you. Every word I wrote for you. Well, you can just write me an exit speech and make it fast because I'm leaving you, Luke, and right now. What did I do? What did I say? My play, look what she did to it. My beautiful play, torn into a thousand fragments. Here's the opening of Act Two. Oh, Eddie, it can't be true. Jane couldn't have gone to Reno either. This is like a bad dream. And this apartment looks like a bad dream, too. What happened? Oh, you wouldn't believe it, Eddie. She threw things at me. She broke things. Where's Elsie's second speech? I don't know. Well, find it. Oh, it's like a dream, Eddie. Mm. I want Jane back. I I'm lonely. 
I tell you, Eddie, she's gone, and something's gone out of me. I'm, I'm through. I'll never set foot in the theater again. Come in. Hello, Luke. Hello, Eddie. Hiya. Hello, Mike. Come on in, Bert. Well, Luke, the set worked out fine. Yeah, and here are the sketches for Jane's gown. Just what are you two talking about? Didn't you tell me to build a model of the new set? Yeah, and you told me the gown. Don't you two be... crackpots read the papers? Jane's gone. My whole life is scrap. Hey, Mike, what is this? I told you to build the stairs right down in the middle of the yeah, set. I Let know, me see those sketches, Bert. Sure, ah, look at that. You call yourself a designer? Well, That's I've too got... many ruffles for Jane. I said simple, simple. Now, wait a minute, Luke. Just to remind you. Jane is in Reno. Oh, Eddie, I can't pass this show up. It's got to be done. Come on, you two. Don't stand there gawking. Change your stairs, Mike. Fix your ruffles, Bert. Hurry up. Now, get going. Okay. I'll have them done tomorrow. Go on. Go on. Eddie, she's going to play it. If she loves me, she'll do it. Don't you see what happened, Eddie? I was a fool. She was overworked, keyed up. She wanted a little rest, and I offered her a few days at Atlantic City. Should have given her at least a week. Eddie, get that, will you? Yeah. Hello? Oh, hello, Kitty. Kitty Morgan of the Globe. What does she want? Some dirt for a column. What do you think? Oh, tell her to... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. The printer stuff in Reno, don't they? Reno's got a newspaper, they do. Let me have that. Hello, Kitty. Yes, yes, Kitty. Well, I'm pretty broken up about the whole thing. The show? Oh, why, I wouldn't touch that show now. Or any show. I'm, I'm through, Kitty. I, I don't know how to put it. Something's gone out of you. Go on, get out of here and don't come back until you bring me an Elsie. Okay. And hurry up, hurry up. Hello, Kitty. Let me put it this way. Something has gone out of me. Something has gone out of me, says Luke Drake. Something's gone out of me, says Luke Drake. Something has gone out of me, says Luke Drake. Playwright abandons theater. Oh, Luke. Oh, darling. Hello. Hello, operator. Get me New York. Mr. Lucius Drake, quickly. I'm so glad to be home. Oh, Jenny, sweetheart. You know, I was absolutely lost without you. Darling. Oh, you had the cabinet fixed. You know, I darn near cried every time I thought about breaking it. Oh, darling, let's face it. You are the most wonderful person in the world. Oh, now, Jenny. Taking care of our beautiful things, giving up the theater and all for me. Luke, I, I feel so selfish. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't go Oh, so... Luke, it's easy to see there hasn't been a woman around this place. Look at that mess of papers on that nah, desk. No, 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 Princess, don't bother. Darling, it's no bother. I Say, what's the matter with this drawer? No? Oh, uh, well, it's locked. Well, why? It's never been locked before. Oh, well, you know how desk drawers are. Hey, come on, come on, sit in your husband's lap, huh? Luke. Huh? What? Have you been working on that play? Is that what you've got in that drawer? So, so that's what you think, huh? Just for that, I'll pry that drawer open if I have to wreck the desk doing it. Where's oh, that hand? No, no, Luke, please. Don't break it. I believe you. Well, if you have the slightest suspicion... No, darling, suspicion. I haven't. I swear. Please come and sit down. Oh, darling. Oh, <laughs> come in. Come Hi, in. Luke. Come in here, Eddie. Well, I got her. You told me to find a girl. Oh, <gasps> Eddie. Uh, the princess is back. <laughs> Why, Jane, when did you... Why, you're back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Find a girl who what, Eddie? What were you going to say? Uh, yeah, just uh, what were you going to say, Eddie? A girl who what? Well, uh, yeah, you told me uh, you told me to go out and find a nice girl and uh, settle down, so I did. Uh, oh. I'm in, Beulah. Jane, meet Beulah. Well, how do you do? Hello. Oh, how do you do? Oh, hello. Oh, Jane. Jane, who'd have dreamed that, that, that Eddie would take the step? Oh, old sourpuss went and did it. Well, uh, we haven't exactly done it yet. Oh, no, we haven't done it yet. Oh, we're going to have great times, the four of us. we, we got to get together. How about tomorrow? Why, Luke, shame on you. Our dearest friend Eddie going to get married. I want to hear all about these lovebirds. Sit down, Beulah. Uh, Jane, uh -huh. uh, Jane, we, uh, we can't stay just now. Uh, Beulah and I have to catch a show in Brooklyn. A show on Sunday? Uh, well, it's a concert. Eddie, you going to a concert? <laughs> well, I guess it's Beulah's influence. Yeah, it is Beulah. She loves music. As a matter of fact, she's quite a musician. How wonderful, the piano. Huh? Oh, yeah, the piano. Yeah, great talent. Oh, that's splendid. A musician. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, you know that's funny. I would have sworn that she was an actress. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's a laugh. What do you mean? Well, I, I hope you enjoy the concert, Beulah. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wait a minute, yeah, gentlemen. On. Look at her. 
Whom do you see? Whom do we see? Uh-huh. What, Beulah? No, no, Elsie. Elsie? Uh-huh. Well, what's she talking about, Eddie? Elsie, you know the character in your play. Oh. Oh! Poor oh, Max isn't that the play. <laughs> Still thinks Beulah's an actor. Oh, yeah. no, Eddie. You said she was a musician. Yeah. Beulah, dear, there's plenty of time before the concert. Wouldn't you like to play something for us? Uh-huh. Sit oh. down, dear. No, no Jane. Just no, anything at all, Beulah. I love the piano. Oh, look, gee, I don't think I'd better play, play. now. Dear, play, dear. Uh, play. Beulah, can you, uh, I mean, uh, would it be all right? Well... Well, that's a girl. Go ahead, dear. Now play. Play. Well, okay. Oh. oh, that's lovely. What technique, what a touch, what execution. Uh, Jane, let, let me explain this. Uh, isn't it through? Uh, Listen, I never took a lesson in my life. Play, I... Beulah, do you hear? Play. Uh, Jane, please. Uh, Luke, give you're me absolutely Jane. touching, really. Uh, darling, I can... Uh, Luke, uh, here's the model for the new set. Get out of here, get out, get out. Oh, the model for the new set. It's beautiful, Mike. Yeah, I just... Get I, out. I was... Yes, get out, Mike. But don't get in my way. Goodbye, Lou. Uh, Janie, and Janie. If you want me again, my address is still the Harper Hotel in Reno. Good luck, dear. Janie. I... Look, listen, I could. Shut up. And get that dame away from that piano. Hello, Harper Hotel. Just a moment, I'll connect you with the room clerk. Excuse me, what's Mrs. Drake's room number, please? Could I have your name, please? Yes, I'm Mr. Drake. One moment, please, I'll announce you. Thank you. Oh, miss, uh, will you call Mrs. Drake's room, please? Tell her Mr. Dudley is waiting in the lobby. Well, if it isn't William. Uh, Lou, well, what brings you here? Uh, I didn't know you were in Reno. Yeah, and I didn't know you were in Reno. No, 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 now, see here, old man, let's not create a scene. Why not? I enjoy a good scene. Will you be quiet? You may not have any reputation, but I have. All right, all right, I'll whisper it. You haven't got a chance with Jane. Can you hear that? You aren't worth her little finger. Please, quiet. Uh, hello, Jane. Good evening, William. How nice of you to ask me to dinner. Jane, I want to talk to you. Oh, you do. Shall we go, William? Well, the world's in a mighty fine state when a man can't even talk to his own wife. And a man named Dudley comes courting her before she's even divorced. Quiet, quiet. What are you trying to do, Drake? I'm trying to carry on a little private conversation with my wife. Well, for heaven's sake, Jane, talk to him. Sure, let's go up to your room. No, no, I'd rather not. Th then take my cards right at the curb. Well, now, that's very nice of you, William. You wait right here for me now, William. Yes, good night, Jane. Much obliged, old pal, old kid, old stuffed shirt. <laughs> Well, when are you going to talk? You know, Jane, we've, we've come a long way from the Luke and Jane that stood before that small-town preacher, haven't we? Yes, and what have we gotten out of it? Well, we've had seven years, the greatest, most electrifying years of my life. As a matter of fact, I can't remember any other years, only the ones I spent with you. Just keep driving, Luke, now keep driving. What are you afraid of, honey? Luke. I want you to tell me something before we go any further. In, in my age, I mean. Are you going to give up the theater? No. Then please take me back to the hotel. I won't give it up because it's us. If you won't quit, Luke, there's nothing more to be said. Oh, and you won't quit either. Maybe you'll hook up with somebody like old Stuff Shirt Dudley, but just as sure as today is Wednesday, today, today is we'll Thursday, not Wednesday. All right. All right, Princess. I wish you luck. Anyway, will you, will you do one thing for me? Will you read the script? I've never put on anything without your advice, and I... Here, I brought it along. Well, well I, I can't read it in the dark. I... I'll switch on the light for you. All right, give me the play. Thank you, Jane. Hey, hey, what's that? I don't know. Well, what's the matter with it? Well, I guess there's some... Well, what do you know? We're out of gas. Oh, fine. Ah, that William. There is a guy for you. Comes a courting with an empty tank. Oh, Luke, don't be a critic. Do something. We can't sit out here all night. Well, there must be an auto court nearby, honey. Uh-huh. There must be a gasoline station nearby, too. As a matter of fact, there is one right over there, you see? Yeah, so there is. <laughs> Aren't we lucky? Mm -hmm. Evening, folks. Hello. Hello. We'd like some gas, please. Yeah, fill it up. Nope, sorry. What do you mean, no? Can't. Why not? Rita Hayworth? Now, oh, look, Pop, what's Rita Hayworth got to do with our buying gas? Rita Hayworth's picture's playing in Reno. Son Betty about Rita Hayworth. Son at picture show. Key to gas pump and son's pocket. Well, now, that is just dandy. Did he have to take the key with him? He don't trust me. Like a cabin? Got some nice cabins. No, thanks. We'll wait for your son right here. Won't be back until morning. Spends the night in Reno. Sure you don't want a cabin. 
Well? All right, all right. We'll take two cabins. Sorry, lady, I only got one. Then I'll take it. Alone. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this way. Uh, Jane. Good night, Luke. Oh, Jane, I, I'm going to be cold out here. Oh, dear, I never thought of that. What a shame. Good night, Luke. Jamie. Princess, open the door, please. Well? Hello. Hello. Oh. Well, Jane, did you... Did you read the play yet? Yes, I did. Well? Oh, come on, say it, Princess. There's something you don't like. Well, as a matter of fact, Luke, there is. I, I don't like your quibbling about the custody of the child. Oh, After I'm all, so seems... glad you said that. That's one section that doesn't please me either. No? It needs rewriting. But uh, go ahead, Princess, go ahead. Well, Luke, I think it's the greatest play you've ever written. Do you mean that? Yes, I do. And I think the part of Ruth is the greatest feminine role I've ever read. Well, then. Well? I hope you get a fine actress to play it. In a minute or two, Mr. DeMille presents Act Two of Bedtime Story, starring Loretta Young and Don Amici. Meanwhile, give your imagination a bit of exercise and hear about the sad plight of a beautiful rayon slip, which unaccountably has found a voice of its own. Oh, once I was lovely, but now I'm forlorn. I'm frayed at the seams and I'm faded and worn. I'm left in the drawer now to fret and to mourn, betrayed by the wrong kind of care. Now the girl I belong to looks clever. That she lucks me each night was my hope. But I found she wasn't as smart as she looks, for she scrubbed me with strong wash day soap. I might have been safe with the greatest of ease With Lux care I'd still be as fresh as the breeze Pay heed to my story and girls if you please Use Lux for your undies each day Girls that care about daintiness do just that Lux undies every day And this daily luxing not only protects daintiness It keeps under things like new longer You see, Lux removes perspiration and perspiration can injure delicate fibers. Lux takes it away safely, but no harmful alkali or cake soap rubbing to injure fabric or color. So Lux girls win two ways. They're sure to avoid offending, and they're sure to keep undies like new longer. Remember? Oh, Lux bursts into suds with the greatest of ease. It helps undies wear, makes them fresh as a breeze. It's gentle. It's thrifty, so girls, if you please, be wise, lux your undies each day. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of Bedtime Story, starring Don Amici as Luke and Loretta Young as Jane, with Truman Bradley as William. <laughs> After a sleepless night in the back seat of the automobile, Luke is bleary-eyed and rumpled. At the wheel of the car, ready to leave the auto court, he glances appealingly at Jane, who's gazing very interestedly at the scenery. The attendant waits patiently for his money. I said my son put in ten gallons. That'll be four dollars and forty cents with the single cabin. No. Oh. What? I said four forty. Oh, I haven't any money. Well, well, <laughs> no money. It's all right. My wife will pay you. Pay him, will you, honey? Oh, honestly, you are the most helpless creature. Oh, you're so right, Princess. Helpless. I'm sorry I haven't any cash. Here's my credit card. Uh-huh. I'll make you out a receipt. Thank you. Jane, mm -hmm. isn't there anything you can suggest about my helplessness? I'm sorry, Luke. It's too ingrown. Mm. Now you owe me $4.40, and I expect to collect it. See? Oh, sure, sure. Have old 6% Dudley figure up the interest. He may even advise you to hang on to it. Over a period of 20 years, you know, it'll double itself. Here you are, lady. Receive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, come back again sometime. Yeah, if I ever get back to Nevada, I'll be sure to look you up the very first thing. Nevada? You ain't in Nevada. 
This is California. <laughs> Don't even know what state they're in. Jane Drake, granted divorce. Famous actress, gives up career. She can't do this. She can't. Luke Drake cast new play. Virginia Cole gets lead dramatic part. Virginia Cole, a comedian. Oh, he can't do that. He can't. Now listen, Luke. I can't play a part intended for Jane Drake. Don't be silly, Virginia. Eddie, tell her, will you? Oh, everything's different now, Virginia. Haven't you heard? Now we have comedians playing serious parts, and we have dramatic actresses getting divorces. What is all this? Okay, Virgie, I'll come clean. The part in that play is still intended for Jane Drake. Oh, a dual role. I play it, but I don't play it. That's right. Well, if I don't play it, I can play it just as well at home. So long, Luke. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Virgie, please wait a minute. I want you to pretend you're going to play it. You see, if, if there's one thing Jane can't stand, it's to see a good part, a part meant for her murdered by Miss Casting. Now, look, I'm a funny woman, but I have my feelings. Oh, no, Virginia, please. What? Oh, Mr. Drake, Mrs. Drake is here. The princess, she's here. Send her in. Yes, sir. She's honoring us with a call, Eddie. What do you think of the general now? Huh? Okay, general, you win. Virgie, what do you say? Will you say you're playing? Well, at least it's different being fired before you're hired. For you, I'll do it. Oh, Virgie, you're a sweetheart. Watch it, watch it. Good morning, Luke. Oh, hello, hello, Jane. Uh, with you in just a minute. Now, look, Virginia, on the second act curtain, Ruth slaps her face. See, a backhand blow. Do you get it? Oh, sure, sure, I see. That's a good girl. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Jane, this is Virginia Cole. This is my, uh, this is uh, Jane Drake. How do you do? How do you do? By the way, congratulations, Miss Cole. It's a wonderful part. Oh, oh, I know I have my work cut out for me, but Luke is pretty confident. <laughs> oh, there's no question about it. And you're very talented. Why, thank you. So are you. Many's the time I've cried at your performances. Well, I've laughed a lot at you, so that makes us even. <laughs> well, I'll be running. Goodbye, Luke. Goodbye. So long, Eddie. Yeah. Sit down, sit down, Jane, please. Uh, Eddie, Eddie, don't go away. I want to talk to you. Great girl, that Virgie got the makings of a great actress. Luke, No, Eddie, I... for the part of the editor, I want Whitbeck. Luke! Uh, no, ju uh, just a second, please, Jane. Uh, the best people for every part, no matter how small. Luke, I just dropped in to tell you I'm selling the furniture. Okay, okay, and another thing, Eddie, if... What? I thought you'd like to know I'm selling the furniture. You mean... You mean our things? Yes. Oh, well, listen, you... You can't do that. Well, just think of all the hamburgers we ate to buy some of those things. If you laid them all end to I end... I am I... not interested in laying hamburgers end to end or in the furniture. Under the circumstances, don't you think we ought to get rid of it? Yeah, I... I guess so. Well, since we agree, I think uh, an auction would be the quickest method. Any objections? No. No, of course not. Very well. I'll, I'll attend to the announcements. Bye. Bye, Eddie. So long. An auction. Well, General, how are things in general? Shut up. <laughs> Sold, sold. Everything I had in the world is sold. But, Jane, dear, that's what an auction is for. Look at this table. Sold to Mr. Dinglehoff. My beautiful vase. Also sold to Mr. Dinglehoff. Oh, William, I wouldn't have minded so much if it hadn't been a man named Dinglehoff. Well, dear, Mr. Dinglehoff offered a profit, a very comfortable profit. Well, now, let's see. Uh, where are you going to live? Well, I'm taking an apartment upstairs. Dinglehoff. The man buys all the things we walked our feet off to find. And where is Luke? At rehearsal. He doesn't even care enough to show up to buy his own desk. And it's the one I gave him when we were first married. Now, Jane, why get upset? I'm not upset, William. I'm not. It's just that what I was most afraid of is true, that's all. There isn't a drop of real feeling left in him. Why, for that precious play of his, he'd, he'd steal the blankets off a shivering orphan. Jane, dear, I, I wish there was something I could do for you. I wish I could help. Oh, you do, William. You do help. And, and you know something else, William? I'm beginning to appreciate you. Your dignity and, and, and loyalty and dependability. William, I want to see a lot of you. An awful lot. Oh, Emma, Emma, come on, come on. Put some life in the part. Try that line again. Ruth. You've been out over an hour. Where were you? You'd really like to know. <laughs> Where were you? No, no, no! You're not asleep, Emma! 
or are you? Maybe my play is boring you. Oh, Lou. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I raise my voice above a whisper and she breaks down and blubbers like a schoolgirl. That isn't what I'm blubbering about. How can you expect us to stand up here and rehearse? How can you do it when... When what? Everybody seems to know about it but you, you silly playwright. The papers are full of it. But you're so busy yelling your cool head off. Where's the paper, Eddie? Give me a paper. There it is, Lou. Picture on page six. Jane Drake, to wed socialite banker. Divorced actress announces engagement to William Dudley, Jr. Rehearsal at eight tonight. Back at eight, everyone. Oh, now she served notice on you, pal. Yeah. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Mac. Is my car parked near the hydrant again? <laughs> no. No ticket this time. Hi, Mr. Drake. Hi, Mac. Say, Eddie, what I dropped in for, you better stay away from Billy's place tonight because we're going to raid it. Billy's? What's that got to do with me? Well, that wouldn't be your grandfather they pour out of there every other morning, would it? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Where is this Billy's place, Eddie? How should I know? Come on, cut out the stall. And what kind of a joint is it? Liquor without a license and a nice, friendly crap game on the side. Oh, yeah? Where is it? Don't look at me. I don't Where know Where is it? Third door down the street, 841. Come on, I gotta get to a phone. Hello, Jane. This is Luke. I just read the news. Congratulations, honey. Yeah. Say, uh, look, I, I want you and William to come out and have dinner with me. Oh, now, look, please. J well, uh, uh, well, listen, I'll even ask William myself. I'll tell him to meet us here at the theater, and the minute you both get here, I'll dismiss the company. Oh, that's fine, Jane. Thanks an awful lot. Okay, call William right now. Goodbye. Eddie, what's yeah. that Billy's address again? 841. Hey, what are you doing? I'm calling Mr. William Dudley. I'm inviting him to dinner at Billy's place. All right, all right, kids. Now we'll take a scene once more from Virgie's entrance. Places, please. Hey, Luke, Jane's here. Where? Sitting in the last row. The princess. Eddie, I'll have her up on that stage in five minutes. You just watch me. Just watch me. Well, what are you waiting for up there? Go on, go on, Virgie. I didn't get a cue. Yeah, well, don't wait all night. Take it from, uh, doesn't, doesn't matter what I want. And get a little feeling into it, please. Now, go on. It doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for hold me. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That's horrible. I want you to fight, scratch, and snarl, but like a lady. Now, go ahead, try it again. It doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for me. What's wrong? No, what no, Virgie, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you think you're doing, calling hogs? Or is your voice changing? I'll continue, please. What's proper and what isn't proper? You've glared and scolded and frightened me long enough. Now I'll tell you something you'll never No, forget. no, 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 Eddie, Eddie, what have I done to deserve this? I give my whole life to the theater, and what do I get? A hog collar, a dummy, a skirt on stilts. Oh, stop it, stop! Oh, you are crying. You couldn't cry. You haven't got an emotion in your whole body. Look, cut it out. Cut it out, you hear? You ought to be ashamed of yourself jumping all over that girl. Oh, hello, Jane. I didn't know you were here. It's obvious she doesn't know what you want. Why don't you get up there and show her? With what? The blackboard and a box of chalk? Oh, Luke, really, that's unnecessary. I don't know what he wants, Miss Drake. You probably understand him, won't you show me? Not even Jane Drake could show you. Shakespeare couldn't. Sarah Bernhardt Keep couldn't. Keep quiet, Luke. I'll try, Miss Cole. H has anyone a script? Here, take mine. Thank you. Now, if you'll just give me a minute to look this thing over, I'll... Okay, Jane. Hey, hey, listen, Luke. It's a patrol wagon. Yeah, don't look now, Eddie, but I think that's William Dudley going bye-bye. Are you ready, Jane? Yes, I think I can try it now. Oh, darn that racket anyway. Uh, just, just talk above it, Jane. Yeah, all right. Let's start here, huh? It doesn't matter what I want. You're telling me what's good for me, what's proper and what isn't proper. You've glared and scolded and frightened me, all I can stand for. And now I'll tell you something you'll never forget. That gardener's going to stay, and there's no law that can put him off the premises. It's a free country, and what I choose to do is none of the town's business. No. And another thing. That gardener is going to stay just as long as I want him to, and that's forever. Because I love him. You love him? Yes, I love him. And I'm going to marry him. Kurt. Very nice, Jane. Thank you. Thank you. There you are, Virgie. You see? I see. Hey, I could never play that scene for you, Luke, but watch me play this one. Go ahead, Virgie. Give, give. I can't do it like that. Let a girl, let a girl. Now, now, listen. You signed the contract, Miss Cole. I didn't sign the contract to make a sucker out of myself. 
You can't run out on me. I'll, I'll have you blacklisted. Well, all right, then. I'll, I'll, I'll go back into burlesque. I won't have to act there. I won't have to say a word. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. no, no, Jane. Let oh. her go. Look, I'm so terribly sorry. I, I thought it would help her. That's oh, young... maybe you're right, Jane. Oh. She could never have played the part. Well, I... Thanks, just the same, Jane. Well, folks, I guess I don't have to tell you we're in a pretty tough spot. Not a chance to open now. You're a swell bunch, and you'll probably get better parts and better plays. Thanks very much. Good night. Come on, Jane. William will probably be along any minute. We'll wait out in the lobby. Yes, all right. Good night, everyone. Luke. Luke, there must be somebody who can play that part. You can't give up before you've even looked. Well, what if I did find it? It'd take work and time. I, I can't postpone indefinitely. Well, it's... No, no, I'm going to forget it. Oh, it's awful tough on the troop, though. Take poor Emma, for instance. She never has a dime. Yes, I know. Where in the world is William? Oh, yeah, that's right. Where is William, Eddie? Oh, he'll probably be along pretty soon. Well, I don't understand this at all. It isn't like him. No, this isn't like William. No, he probably got held up somewhere. Well, uh, look, uh, why don't we go over to Tony's, huh? Oh, but what about William? Oh, the stage door man will tell him. It'll be all right. Oh. Yeah, look at that sign. The Jane Drake Theater. Well, Eddie, I guess you can haul the sign away with the scenery. We won't be needing it now. Oh, it's an awfully nice sign. Yeah. Such nice big letters, too. Yes. Luke. Huh? Luke, suppose you had someone to play that part, just temporarily, I mean, so, so you could keep the troop together and open as you planned. Well, what do you mean? Well, you'd have time to find somebody and work with her until she could take my place. Your place? Well, I... Oh, I th Princess, would you do that for me? Now, now, don't misunderstand me, Luke. I haven't changed my mind about the theater, but temporarily, to help those actors out, Gosh, I think... Gosh, Jane, that'd... that'd be wonderful. Hi, Eddie. Oh, hi, Mac. Well, Eddie, we raided Billy's place, just like I told you. Well, I'll see you again sometime, Mac. Goodbye. Yeah, yeah, so long, Boy, Mac. you know, when you tap one of them places, you used to see what comes rolling out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See you around, Mac. Goodbye, Everything Goodbye Mac. Everything from a boot black to a blue blood. This time, we might, we nabbed a Park Avenue Panker. What? Yeah. And he tried to pull a new one. <laughs> he said he thought the place come was... On, come on, come on, Jane, let's go, let's yeah, go. Yeah, just let's a go. minute, Mac. This Park Avenue banker thought the place was a what? <laughs> he said he thought the place was a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you like that? That's very funny. <laughs> Luke, Luke, dear, you know that scene in the play where the girl delivers the backhand slap? Well, sure. What about it? Well, it ought to be done like this. Oh! <laughs> Well, let's see. Apartment 1004. Well, it's right above our old place. Hey, Luke, I don't think you're going to get anywhere with Jane just by bringing a flower. Oh, I stop think worrying, Eddie. It's a cinch. She promised to do the part, didn't she? Yeah, but that was before she had to get Dudley out of jail last don't night. Don't you worry, Eddie. Just leave it to King Lucius the First, Lucius the Conqueror. Maybe we should have brought our armor, King Lucius. Here we are. Prime Minister, ring the bell. Help yourself, King Lucius. Eddie, the play and the Drake shall go on for seven more years. For seven times seven more years. Oh, Oh, Mr. Drake. Ah, good day, good day. Betsy McGurl, inform your mistress that His Majesty and the Prime Minister have come to two pat with her. Oh, Mr. Drake. What's the matter? <laughs> Anything happened to Mrs. Drake? Yes, she's Mrs. Dudley. What? She just phoned from Greenwich. She and Mr. Dudley were married there ten minutes ago. Married? Well, Luke, the king is dead. Yeah. Long live Mrs. Dudley. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille will return with Loretta Young and Don Amici for Act Three of Bedtime Story. Now, here's our friend Sally, and she wants me to ask her a question. So, here goes. 
Sally, why is every night like Christmas Eve for Lux girls? Because every night they hang up their stockings. After they've luxed them. And Lux plays Santa Claus, I suppose, by adding a gift of extra wear to those precious stockings. Sure. Well, Sally, you're pretty nearly right at that. Of course, Lux Flakes don't actually add any new qualities to your stockings, but they do save one very important thing, and that's elasticity. You know how an old dried-out rubber band breaks when you try to stretch it. Well, same kind of thing happens to your stockings if you let strong wash day soaps or cake soap rubbing weaken the threads and dry them out. They break easily when you bend or kneel or strain them. Break into needless, expensive runs. But Lux saves that vital elasticity. Right, Sally. Gentle Lux flakes have no harmful alkali to injure the tiny threads. And with Lux, of course, there's no cake soap rubbing either. So whether you're wearing silk, nylon, the new rayons, or the new Lyles, luxing your stockings pays. You're making yourself a present of longer stocking wear. Yes. If you'll stick to Gentle Lux for all your precious stockings, you'll find they'll wear better, stay fresh, and new looking longer. Lux is care experts advise. Over 90% of the makers of stockings, makers of silk, nylon, rayon, cotton, and wool, advise Lux Flakes. It's gentle, it's quick, and it's very thrifty. One big box of Lux Flakes will do stockings every night for months. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of Bedtime Story, starring Donna Michi and Loretta Young with Truman Bradley. Mrs. William Dudley, a bride of ten minutes, is on her way back to town, but King Lucius refuses to acknowledge defeat. Somewhere in his fertile brain, a plan is evolving. Eddie, I've got it. Get me two character actors who never played in New York. What? Two character actors. Now get them. One hour later, just 30 seconds after the bride and groom reach their hotel suite, there is a knock on the door. Well? Is Mrs. Drake here? No. If you mean Mrs. Dudley, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. That's exactly what we've come about. Whether she is Mrs. Dudley or still Mrs. Drake. What? Come in, please. Just a moment. Who are you two gentlemen? Collins is my name. This is my colleague, Mr. Pierce. Mm. We are legal representatives of the Colony Insurance Company. We hold a trust fund in the names of Mr. and Mrs. Drake jointly. That's true. What about it? Well, if either party remarries, the fund is to be divided. Well, I've remarried. Divided. Ah! Ah, uh, what? That's the question. Is the marriage valid? Is it valid? Why, of course it's... I'm Mr. Dudley. Ah! ah. Where were you married? In Greenwich. Ah. Did you check to see if a Reno divorce was acceptable in the state in which you were married? Naturally. We had the bank lawyer's advice. Oh, bank lawyer. Harvard men. Now, look, I I'm sure everything was in order. I wouldn't have been married if I hadn't been properly divorced, would I? Well, naturally, there's Nevada and there's New York. Yes, but we were married in Connecticut. Then there's Nevada and Connecticut. Now, if we find anything wrong with your divorce, naturally, you will have committed bigamy. B bigamy? Just a moment. Don't I know you? Haven't I seen you somewhere before? I doubt it very much, madam. A doctor? Have you a brother who's a doctor? No, no, I'm sure of that, because I haven't any brother. <laughs> now, Jane, look. William, this whole thing is preposterous. But, Jane, if, if there is a risk of a bigamy... William, you too. Now, now, be reasonable, Jane. I tell you, I'll call Eccles, the best divorce lawyer in town. Now, look, I don't know one word of law, but I can smell something fishy about this a mile off. Madam, there's no place in law for a woman's nostrils. <laughs> Where is Eccles? We've been waiting an hour. Why doesn't he come? Oh. Oh. Will you please stop saying that? Oh, there he is, William. I'll get it, I'll get it. Oh, you! Evening, William. Congratulations, Jane. Oh. Well, 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 it's quite a crowd here, isn't I it? I must say you've got a nerve to show your face around here after making me spend a night in jail. Oh, I'm not the kind that holds a grudge, William. Oh, you're not! No, no. Grieving playwright comes to congratulate happy ex-actress. You wouldn't happen to know these two gentlemen, I suppose. I don't think I've had the pleasure. And you wouldn't know anything about questioning my Reno divorce either, would you? 
Oh, now, don't tell me that's what they're doing. Yeah. Why? What for? Oh, just for the fun of it. These boys like to play Halloween all year around. Oh, well, now, boys, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Luke, I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask you to leave. Oh, now, Janie, I... Eccles, Eccles, it's Eccles. Uh, come in, quick. Evening, Dudley. Uh, thank heaven you're here. Uh, darling, this is Mr. Eccles. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Now, what you said, Dudley, this is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. I'm sure it won't take a minute. There, there, you see, gentlemen. Oh, William, stop it. You're acting like a frightened old maid. Well, I won't leave this room with our status up in the air. Bravo! Now, Jane, William knows best. He's got to iron out your status. Lucius Drake, author, man of imagination, cooks up a brand new plan to get his play done at any cost. Never mind anyone's happiness. Just get the play done. Is that what you really think? Yes. Please, please, just what is the point in question? It is our contention that while Mrs. Drake was in Reno, she left to join Mr. Drake in New York. Yes, I did. Ah. And therefore broke her required stay in Nevada. Ah. But I went back. I started all over again. I stayed the full six weeks. Jane, can, can you prove that? Yes. Y yes, I can. I have my Reno hotel receipts. I can account for every day. Excellent. Now, now wait a minute. Yes, here they are. There. Now, look at them. Oh, perfect, Jane. Why, this is all we need. Look, Harper Hotel, two weeks. Uh -huh. Harper Hotel, two weeks, and so on. Elite Auto Court, 10 gallons of gas and lodging, $4 and... Oh. Uh, what's that one, Jane? Oh, oh it's, it's nothing, nothing. It doesn't belong with these others at all. Uh, will you just step over here, gentlemen, and examine them? Certainly. Come on, Princess, think fast. One thing you never liked in the theater was farce. You know you married Mr. Technicality out of pure spite. The answer's in your hands, Jane. Yes. Yes, it is, isn't it? Elite Auto Court, Glenville. But what's that got to do with it? You owe me $4.40, Luke. Oh, now listen, Jane, be serious. Please stop kidding yourself. I have. I've stopped kidding myself about you. You know, Luke, I had a dream last night. I dreamed I picked up a knife and stabbed you, and when you started to bleed, it wasn't blood at all. What came pouring out of you was manuscripts and scenery and footlights and pencils. <laughs> And now it isn't me you're thinking of, nor my marriage to William. is that precious play of yours. Why, you'd see me burned to the stake for it. There isn't anything that you could say now that I'd believe. No, no, there's nothing that you'd believe. All right, Hank and Billy, drop the curtain. Show's over. Well, what's the matter, Mr. Drake? Actors. Characters. Yeah, Jane, you remember Billy Pierce played the doctor in the road company at Tornado. Hiya, oh, Jane. Of course, a doctor. Actors. There must be something in the criminal code covering this. Well, is there Eccles? I'm a divorce lawyer. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Drake, for the entertainment. Actors. Thanks a lot, fellas. Look up Eddie tomorrow and he'll pay you. Isn't very often you get your teeth in the good part. Ah, uh, good show, but a short run. Well, I'll see you to the elevator, gentlemen. Get out. Great place, the theater. We can play it being anything. Doctors, lawyers, anything we like. Just a great, big, happy, make-believe world. Well, I guess I better get going. Good luck, Princess. Elite Auto Court, Glenville, California. Listen, Jane, I've got to talk to you. Emma, this is my wedding day. William will be back here in a William, minute William, that I... dope. You let the swellest guy in the world who went out and picked yourself a, a dope. Oh, the swellest guy in the world is married to his play, and he can have what it. What play? He called it off. He, he called it off? When? This afternoon. Everybody in the cast was paid off with a bonus. He called it off? Yes, because he loves you. Oh, Emma... Emma, he, he just left here. Do you think you could find him? Anybody'd know where to find him tonight. He's in some bar. Well, Emma, now look. You get to him, see? Get to him quickly and, and give him this, this receipt. He owes me $4.40, and I want it, see? Now, you tell him to look at it, study it well, and then write me a check for it immediately, tonight. Do you understand? A measly $4 at a time like this. What's got in here? Oh, Emma, I've got to prove something to myself. Just do it. Do exactly what I told you. Please, darling, put that bill right under his nose. And she said she wants her four dollars and forty cents, Luke. She wants a check tonight. Sure, sure, anything for the princess. Eddie, what do I want? A drink? No, no, no. I want to do my play, right? Right. You're a liar. I want Jane. I want my wife. I want her more than all the plays in the world. Lucius, you'd better write that check before you forget it. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. You know me. It's as good as done. Give me the thing. Yeah. 
$4.40. Get me a pen, will you, Eddie? Sure. Let's see. Elite Auto Court, Glenville, California. Elite Auto Court, California. California. California! Don't do that! Eddie, quick, get me a cab. Get me a cab. What's the matter? I gotta get that hotel. She's my wife. Who is? My wife is on a technicality. Hello. Hello, desk. Uh, now, listen, this is Mr. William Dudley in 725. Yes. Uh, there's apt to be a Mr. Lucius Drake trying to see Mrs. Dudley this evening. Don't let him up. You understand? Oh, and uh, by the way, I shouldn't wonder if he's a little dangerous. You'd better keep a sharp eye on him. Thank you. William, who was that? Uh, what, what, was it for me? <laughs> uh, no, dear. Oh. Are you sure? Um, the desk clerk there. Oh. Um, by the way, I, uh, <laughs> I ordered some champagne. Oh, oh, well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, darling, I, uh, <clears throat> I haven't kissed you since the ceremony this morning. <laughs> well, uh, don't you think it'd be better if we waited for the champagne? <laughs> what do you mean I can't go upstairs? I'm sorry, sir. Listen, you just try and stop no, me. I have orders. So what? I want to see Mrs. Dudley. If you go near that elevator, sir, you'll be arrested. Now I'm warning you. All right. Where are the phones? Right over there, sir. Thanks. Hello. Hello. Uh, give me the housekeeper. Uh, uh, hello. Housekeeper? Well, listen, this is room 725. Say, what kind of a hotel is this? The sheets haven't been changed, there aren't any towels, and the tub is dirty. Well, get right up here. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Uh, give me room service, please. That's right. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Room service. This is Mr. Dudley in 725. Would you send up six chicken dinners right away? That's good. Uh, hello, operator, give me the plumber. The plumber. Yeah, uh, hello, hello, plumber. Say, this is 725. The pipes up here are making an awful racket. Enough racket to wake the dead. Get right up here, will you? Jane, dear, come here. W William, listen. Uh, Jane, what is it? You're acting so strangely. Well, William, about, about that technicality, were you and Mr. Eccles certain? Oh, oh who cares about a little technicality? <laughs> Jane, darling. Oh, uh, but William, there's another technicality, and it's a very important one. Oh, you poor baby, you're upset. Now, listen, William, you've got to listen to me. I, I, you've just got to it. Oh, who can that be? Well, what's the matter with the bed? Who are you? I'm the chambermaid. That's who I am. Now, listen, I'll you... I'll have those pipes fixed in a minute, sir. What pipes? The bathtub pipe. Now, wait a you minute. You want more towels in here? I put in... No! Wait a minute. Where's the short circuit up there? No fire, is there? You get out of here! That's a Don't worry, Mr. Dudley. Six chicken dinners. What sort of a hotel is... Are you Mr. Dudley? Yes, I'm Mr. Dudley. Well, where are the bugs? What bugs? You said the joint was forming with bugs. I did not. I turned that vacuum cleaner off. You want the rug clean, don't you? Is this room 725? Yes, it Good. is. Good. Come on in, guys. Here's where the crap game is. Stop oh, it. Go. Get out of here. Get out of here. Hey, Jenna, where are you? No, no. Did you do this? Hi, the Prince. It's all noisy place, isn't it? Oh, no. Be no, a great Eddie. second act curtain. Come on, come on. We're leaving. What for? I'm enjoying it. You won't in a minute. I got the riot squad coming. <laughs> And when you think how we've been for years, never a ripple, happy as larks. You know, I, I just keep asking myself, how did we get into a spot like this? You know, Princess, we're both wrong. Oh, I knew I'd be wrong. Sure, sure. Well, we both want things, don't we? Yes. So what do two intelligent people do in a situation like this? They decide to give and take, just like they always Luke, did. Luke, we're on the wrong floor. I've moved upstairs, you done. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Habit, our old apartment. Yes. Too. Luke, what are you doing? Are you crazy? I'm going in. No, we can't go yes, into someone. Yes, yes, you Luke, can. can. You see? Luke, it's all furniture. Why, it's every single piece of it. Oh, Luke. They just called me Dinglehoff. <laughs> Dinglehoff? Yes. Oh, darling. <laughs> Mr. Dinglehoff. Oh. I could get the farm back, too. Oh, you could, could you? Yeah. Well, supposing it isn't for sale. Oh, why wouldn't it be? Because I won't sell it. You? you? Yes, that's right. Oh, Jamie. Well, darling, have you got a copy of the play? The play? Yes, we have to compromise, don't we? Come on, let's go to work. Oh, no, 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 no. I won't have it that way. There'll be no play, and I have no copy of it. I, uh, I destroyed every one. Why, here's one, dear. 
right in the drawer of the desk. Well, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Of that hand, Luke. That's ten curtains. It's off. a smash hit, Eddie. We'll run five years. Hey, Jane's gonna make a curtain speech. Ladies and gentlemen, my husband, Mr. Drake, is in the wings, and he'll be out here in just a moment. But first, I'd like to tell you that this will have this will have one of the shortest runs of any of Mr. Drake's plays. No, no! Five years, Janey, five years! It will be closed in the early spring. And I'm sure that my husband hopes it will be a boy. What? <laughs> Come on out, Luke. Luke! I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Drake just fainted. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Our stars will return for the curtain call in just a moment. You know, when I went into a store the other day, I noticed that the sales clerk who came up to me wore a white armband. It said, Waste Warden. I asked about it and found that each sales clerk wore it in turn. They all took turns being Waste Warden. Now, you know, that's a job that every one of us has today, whether we wear an armband or not. The job of saving the things we own. So they'll last and wear well and not be wasted. And it's a job in which Lux Flakes can give you a lot of help. You see, Lux saves your pretty washable keeps bright-colored rayon and crisp cotton dresses fresh and bright and new-looking longer, so they'll last and wear a long, long time. It costs you less than a penny to lux a dress. So don't take chances with strong soaps or cake soap rubbing. They may spoil a pretty dress, leave it streaked and faded and wasted. First thing tomorrow, get a generous big box of Lux Flakes. See for yourself what speedy, rich suds it gives you. How beautifully it cleanses your washable dresses, blouses, play suits, sweaters. Let Thrifty Lux Flakes help you in that important job of saving the things you own. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. This is a very happy occasion for the Lux Radio Theater because it's reunited a team of stars who've made many fine pictures together. Loretta Young and Don Amici. Loretta was here uh, very recently, so this return engagement proves how much we like her. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I'll come every week if you'll ask me. <laughs> And I guess you know how much the Lux Radio Theater really owes to Don. Indeed I do. He's played some fine plays here. I think you're walking into something, C.B. Well, I was thinking of Don's scientific accomplishments. Now look what he did in that last picture we made together. Certainly. He invented the telephone. Uh -huh. That was the forerunner of the microphone. Don, you made the Lux Radio Theater possible. Then there's... Uh... <laughs> Uh, th there's that other picture which, uh, which you wrote with all those wonderful songs, like uh, Swanee River. Oh, yes, it's really amazing. What do you do in your new picture, Don? Uh, nothing much, Loretta. Let's forget it. CB, what play are you doing? Don, in the... tell us the name of your new picture. Uh, the Magnificent Dope. Look, CB, what play do you have next to you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Don. I'll rescue you. <laughs> next week, our play is the current Metro Goldwyn Mayer hit. The Bugle Sounds. And our stars will be Wallace Beery and Marjorie Rambo. The Bugle Sounds is the story of a rugged old cavalry sergeant whose regiment is being mechanized. But mechanizing Wallace Beery is a man-sized job for any army. So don't miss this drama of adventure in tanks and jeeps next Monday night. Well, two grand players like Wallace Beery and Marjorie Rambo will be sure to give you a fine play, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night, C.B. Good night. Good night. I like you, like you many evenings. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theatre presents Wallace Beery and Marjorie Rambo in The Bugle Sounds. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Uncle Sam needs rubber. Search your attic, storeroom, garage, or barn for this precious war material. Old tires, garden hose, rubber gloves, tennis shoes, rubber boots, and bathing caps. Whatever you find, an ounce or a ton, if it's rubber, it's needed and needed now. Your nearest garage or filling station will pay you a penny a pound. 
This does not apply in Canada, where a rubber salvage campaign is already in progress. Don Amici is currently making the 20th Century Fox picture Girl Trouble. Bedtime Story was based on a story by Grant Garrett and Horace Jackson. Heard in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan as Eddie, Anne Doran as Virginia, Bernal Felton as Emma, Pinto Kolvig as Pop, and Anne Tobin, Charles Seal, Ralph Sedan, Dick Ryan, Fred Mackay, Edward Marr, Tori Carlton, Boyd Davis, and Naomi Scher. Tune in next Monday night to hear Wallace Berry and Marjorie Rambo in The Bugle Sounds. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>